So one thing which I haven't really played with a lot have been servo motors. And I do want to play with them because, well, not only is it sort of pretty relevant to 3D printing, but there's a couple of projects that I've got where I want to open windows, um, like in a hothouse situation, so that if conditions change, then a servo can actually respond to that. So um, the first thing is to do is to, is to get a servo actually working with probably something like the A-Tiny 85. And uh, I've just noticed actually that um, a pile of stuff uh, in Canada has, uh, has got a video out about uh, working with the A-Tiny 85 and a servo in, uh, in the context of switching tracks for a model railway. So um, I'm interested to see how he goes with that one. So um, let's just have a look and, and see how he gets on. The uh, the servo motor gets really jittery and unpredictable and unstable. And like I said I've spent several evenings on this, and I decided to just give up. Okay, so um, possible reasons why that may not have worked. Um, well, actually, I have had quite a look on, online to see, you know, where this scenario has failed, specifically with an A-Tiny 85 and with, uh, this is called the SG90 uh, servo motor. And uh, there's a lots of different reasons, and I'll list them on the blog, but some of the more common ones are things like making sure that there's enough uh, power supplied to the actual servo and that it's not being run from the uh, from the controller itself. Um, things like making sure that there's a capacitor uh, across VCC and ground so when this needs to overcome friction to get the movement going that there's a, a sudden surge of power required and it's able to deal with that. Uh, there's a lot of talk about the nature and the type of the fuses in here, about the library that's used for this. Uh, there is lots of talk also. Uh, well, look, you know, there's probably, I don't know, 10 or 12 reasons given. Things like twisting the wires of the servo, running them through an iron core. Um, so what I've decided to do is just test a lot of these different things and, and see what I can come up with. And um, so I'll go away and I'll code some of this and we'll come back and we'll see if we can get at least this thing talking to this. And then we'll try and set up a situation similar to what Pile of Stuff was looking for, which is to say uh, a switching mechanism by which you can fairly easily uh, find out which, or you know, at least control how far the servo goes in one direction and then how far it goes in the other direction. So uh, let's see how we go. Right, so we've um, we've coded this now, and I'll I'll put that code on the blog. Uh, went with a specific library. Did try a lot, just like pile of stuff tried. Um, I've got the capacitor in there. I haven't bothered with twisting wires or putting it through iron cores. I am powering it separately using I think five volts. So we'll just see how that goes. And hopefully you can see and hear that there's no jitter on that. And uh, I think a large part of it is because when it's reached its point, I've actually detached the servo entirely. Now that's not gonna suit all applications because I think if you want that torque to remain and that position to remain against force, then that's not gonna happen if you are actually changing it. So it's detached at, the point, at that point and I can move it. Yeah, and then it re, uh, it re-establishes control. So that's not gonna suit all applications. So if you're looking to you know, push a window up, for instance, and then there's force on that window, it's gonna to have to stay in place. So that would be another solution. And I am interested in what that solution might be as well. And I think I'd probably come to the same conclusion that Pile of Stuff has, which is you need a 16-bit timer at least and a bit of grunt in your processor before you use it. 
But uh, the next thing to do anyway with this particular one, because this is a very specific application and the forces will be horizontal, once it reaches that point, there will probably be no forces on it, I'm thinking. So you can detach the motor. So what we'll do is we'll, um, we'll set that uh, up in terms of the actual physical nature of that connection and then we'll also do the coding. Right, so um, here we have our A tiny 85. We have a left button, a right button, a potentiometer, an LED indicator. It's just doing debug work for me, really. And then finally, we have our servo motor coming out here. So, um, yeah, we need a scenario in which this might be useful. So, I don't have any model railway tracks, so I've had to improvise a little bit. So, here is I think this will work okay. Okay, so, um, yeah, there we go. So this is our scenario. We have a bear tied to railway tracks. And, um, of course, that's um, very dangerous. Um, bit of a, you know, unbearable situation, actually. So what we need to do is we need to switch an oncoming train uh, to the right. So, uh, well, let's turn on our switching mechanism to start with. So, in fact, at this stage, um, the A Tiny 85 is asleep. And to wake it up, we press one of these buttons. So, if we press the right button, uh, it'll switch to the right. Oh, that's too far. And if we press the left button, it switches to the left. There we go. So, that right button was was way too far, so I need to make an adjustment there. So if we press and hold that button, and then we can adjust it. So I'll try and adjust it with the, you won't be able to see what's going on here. We're just using the pot, and we'll adjust it to, that's too far. So that should switch the train away. Yep, that's nice. Then so left mouse button, left mouse button, just left button, back to the train track, and then right button, yeah, switching it away. And these are actually held in memory as well in EEPROM. So if I just turn that off and turn it back on again, it'll default to the left-hand side. No, it's defaulting to the right-hand side. Sorry, I changed that in the memory. There we go. Yep, so that's uh, now left-hand side. And it should remember that the right-hand side is not way around the corner. But... Um, yeah, so that's it. So it's barely working, um, but that code did bear fruit, which is which is nice. Um, and there's uh, there's a few things in here also to do with um, reducing uh, jitter. So there's quite a few different uh, things that I did along, you know, with the great big capacitor. Here was one of them. Um, decoupling or you know detaching the servo motor when it's not in use. And uh, there's also some averaging going on of the readings coming from the potentiometer such that it doesn't s sort of wobble around when you're, when you're actually adjusting. What it does is it takes an average and it's pretty steady when you're, uh, when you're doing that. So that's good. I just want to check to see my notes here to see if I've forgotten anything. Um, let's see, I've said, I've said it's very dangerous. Um, the unbearable situation. I don't think... I mean, it looks like I've just done the bare minimum. Oh, no, wait, so that's good. Um, it's barely working, bearing fruit, I don't think. Anyway, and I'll bear that in mind. It, so that's the uh, circuit working for the week. You can find the code on the blog, and um, perhaps this guy now has restored some honour. See you next time.